Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. It is Wednesday, February 7th, and Joe Biden, good old Joey, the puppet, the geriatric, the guy that hits a golf ball backwards, falls up a flight of stairs, looks for dead people in the crowd, takes photos with people that were never there in the first place, a matter of fact, weren't even in the state, converses with dead people at G7 summits, which we just found out yesterday, fights with his teleprompter, which is three years undefeated, let that stat sink in, is still the worst president in American history. Patriots, it's great to be back with you on this fine Wednesday morning. And boy, oh boy, do we have a jam-packed episode for all today. We're going to kick it off with yesterday's White House press briefing where Karine Jean-Pierre was berated by reporters regarding this border bill. That isn't really a border bill for the United States. It's more so a border bill for every other country out there, like Israel, like Iran. I don't know. Gee, who else? Oh, Ukraine, all that stuff. And so this is basically going to be dead on arrival. And she's asked here, hey, what's like Biden's plan B when this doesn't go through? Here's her response. So what's the president's plan once this bill goes, goes down? Look, we're, we're going to, well, here, here's the thing. Well, it is a bipartisan agreement that is the fairest, the toughest agreement that we are going to see or has we have seen in decades. The text is out there. The text is out there. Border Patrol Union supports it. U.S. Chamber of Commerce supports it. Republicans, governor, Republican governor and, 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 uh, and Democratic governors have put a letter to, together, an op-ed, supporting this bill. It could not be stronger or more fairer. And this has taken two months, two months. And I just don't understand, again, why Republicans are getting in the way of this. They should not. They should not. And so, look, the president, uh, again, by the direction, uh, direction of the president, sent his team to work with the Senate. He's taken this very seriously. He put forth a border security supplemental. Obviously, that's part of the national security supplemental. We have a deal. There is a deal there, a deal that is supported by Border Patrol Union. That says a lot. So why can't they move forward on it? Go ahead, Weijia. So to follow up on that, this deal looks like it's going to fail. So without getting into specifics, is there a plan B? I'm not going to uh, get into, uh, sp again, like you just said, get into specifics of a plan B. There is a border that exists right now in front of congressional members, in front of senators, and in front of House members. Right there, a bipartisan agreement that has been endorsed by the Border Patrol Union, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It, is, it has been worked on for two months. And the president laid out in, in a very comprehensive... They don't have a plan B, you guys, at least in front of everybody on the podium there. But they actually do have a plan B behind the scenes, which came out from Joe Biden himself. Here's plan B. And for those on audio, what is plan B? Biden demands illegal aliens he let in get pathway to citizenship. And it's not just the people he let in. It's all illegal aliens. That's his plan B. And we've talked about it here for years on the show that the prediction was Republicans were going to negotiate for, yes, border security, but build a nice big border wall that covers the entire border and then give amnesty. We're not even probably going to get that because now Joe Biden was demanding just yesterday that illegal aliens already in the United States, including the millions who entered during his administration, be given a pathway to citizenship so that they could become American citizens. We have a clip of the dude saying as much, which is just wild. I mean, remember, he's incoherent. He looks for dead people. He converses with dead people. So he very well might be off his rocker, but here he is. Now, it doesn't address everything I'd like uh, that I wanted. For example, we still need a path for, of documentation for those who are already here. And we're not walking away from true immigration reform, including permanent protections and a pathway to citizenship for young dreamers who came here when they were children. I mean, you heard it from the horse's mouth, you guys. You heard it from the horse's mouth. His remarks during a White House press conference were, he also claimed that if Republicans do not pass his border bill, former President Donald Trump will be the only reason the border is not secure. I mean, again, the guy talks to dead people. He takes photos with people that were never there. He's having full-on conversations in his mind with dead people. This is their end game, you guys. And what's their plan B? Well, she's not going to say their plan B on the podium, but that is their plan B to give citizenship to everybody here. 25 million illegal aliens are here present time. 
And that's what they want to do. Why? Because all of those are going to be votes, folks. If they get that, you need to be aware of this. Democrats will win for the rest of your lifetime if that happens. Just understand that. You will never see a Republican in office again. We'll see what comes of it, but that's what happened. And of course, she's not going to answer the question. And, and you know what? What's the, what's the fair deal here? Honestly, 5 million, 5 million, 5,000 a day, 1.8 million a year, which we all know it's going to be more than that. It's going to be vastly more than that. You have 60 billion going to Ukraine, 20 billion going to the border. So Ukraine gets three times as much as America does to protect its own borders. So Ukraine gets to protect theirs all the while they're stealing our money. They stole $40 million that was supposed to go to military grade equipment and military aid of, uh, of due to corruption. And we're, so we're paying interest on the 20 million that we're getting at the border that doesn't actually solve the issue. You got to understand that. Nothing in that legislation solves the issue that's currently taking place and Republicans are backing it, which is insane. So we pay interest on the 20 billion. We pay interest on the 60 billion that's going to Ukraine. We pay interest on the 2.5 million or billion, I think it's billion, that's going to Ukraine humanitarian aid. We also pay the other billions of dollars that's going to Gaza, that's going to Hamas and all these other places. We're, we're paying interest on the 6 billion that's going to Iran. So we're just getting reamed left and right, but you don't worry guys, it's a fair deal. It's all a fair deal, you guys, it's a fair shake. Unbelievable, so she's gonna lie about that one. This next one, holy lordy, I, I can't believe this just happened. Peter Ducey asks two questions here that we've been asking for three years, for a long time bald Bradshaw viewers, heck, even kind of remotely new ones in the last year. What are the two questions we always ask? Number one, why are you blaming Republicans when if you put legislation in the first day of office that you continually brag about, well, why are you blaming Republicans when you had all three branches of government for years? So you put forward legislation the first day, but you have all three branches of government for, for multiple years. Why did you not pass anything? Why are you blaming the Republicans for it? Wait till you hear her response. And then he questions her on Joe Biden talking to dead people. There we go. Thank you. So you guys talk a lot, including today, about how the border wouldn't be such a big deal if Congress would have just passed your immigration bill on day one. Who was in charge of Congress on day one? So it's been three years. It's been three, three whole years, more than three years, more than a thousand days. And look, this is a difficult issue, obviously. This is a difficult issue. And what we have said is that Congress has to act, right? Congress, Democrats, Republicans have to act. But in those three years, it is true that Republicans have gotten in the way. They just have, Peter. They have consistently used immigration, the immigration system, the broken system, as a political stunt. That's what they've done. They've gotten in the way in trying to get more Border Patrol agents. They've gotten in the way in actually trying to fix what's happening, the challenges at the border. They did. So I mean, the, they the voted. Democrats They've actually voted. The first two years, no it has. I'm not saying that Democrats have not been in control the first two years. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying House Republicans have got in the way. They have. They have purposefully gotten in the way in trying to fix what's happening at the border. Okay. And how Kudos to Peter for at least asking the question that we've been asking for three years now. Three years. Thank you, Peter. Bless your freaking heart, brother. Jackie, if you gave him the question, thank you so much. Uh, you know, Phil, if you gave him the question too, or Peter, if you stumbled upon our videos, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it asking the question for three freaking years. Hey, we didn't get an answer, but at least the question was proposed nonetheless. Here's the follow-up question about Joe Biden talking to dead people. How is President Biden ever going to convince the three quarters of voters who are worried about his physical and mental health that he is okay, even though in Las Vegas he told a story about recently talking to a French president who died in 1996? I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole with you, what? sir. What is We're going to go. Hole? Go ahead. He said go he ahead. talked to Mitterrand. Go ahead. In you saw the president in Vegas, in California. You've seen the president in South Carolina. You saw him in Mich Michigan. I'll just leave it there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thing on the border deal, McConnell. Peter's mind is blown. He's like looking at his coworkers. Like, is anybody going to just let this slide? This just goes to show you that the reporters don't care. And so I just made sure I watched the briefing as I always do from beginning all the way to end. I actually watched it twice because I wanted to see, did I maybe miss a reporter backing Peter here on the idea that our president is walking around 
talking to fucking dead people and looking for dead people in the crowd. Do we, do we really need to show the receipts on this? Do we really need to show the receipts? Here's Joe looking for dead people. Committed. And I want to thank all of you here for including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's no, Jackie? Joe, she's dead. I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Unbelievable. So here's a follow up regarding that whole situation. The president appeared to look around the room uh, for an audience member, a member of Congress who passed away last month. He seemed to indicate she might be in the room. Well, the president was, uh, as you all know, you guys were watching uh, today's event, a very important event on uh, food insecurity. The president was naming uh, the congressional champions on this issue and was acknowledging her incredible work. He had, uh, he had already uh, planned to welcome the Congresswoman's family uh, to the White House on Friday. There will be a, a bill signing in her honor this coming Friday. Uh, so, of course, she was on his mind. She was of top of mind uh, for the president. He uh, looks very much looks forward to this. It's unbelievable how she's going to sit there and dodge it. And so, obviously, that was a while ago. But here's the dude <laughs> saying, I was looking at the guy. I was conversing with him. He's dead, Joe. He's been dead for over 25 years. Right after I was elected, I went to a, what they call a G7 meeting, all the NATO leaders. I was in, I was in the south of England. And I sat down and I said, America's back. And Mitterrand from Germany, I mean, from France, looked at me and said, uh, said, you know, why, why how, how long are you back for? And I looked at him, and the, and the Chancellor of Germany said, what would you say, Mr. President, if you picked up the paper tomorrow in the London Times? And the London Times said... Joe is so close to death that he's talking to dead people. And she's going to sit there, well, I'm not even going to engage with that. So Peter's baffled. Nobody follows up. I checked twice. Not a single reporter in there. And, I, you know... Phil, you know I love you, buddy. I thought you were going to follow up. We got you too, Phil. You asked great questions. Don't get me wrong, but damn it. Not a single... I mean, how many people are in there don't follow up with, hey, you know what? Peter makes a great point. Why is he fumbling with his teleprompter all the time? Why is he looking for dead people in the crowd? Why is he taking photos with people that never existed in the first place? Why is he uh, conversing with dead people, Kareen? Why is all this happening? We all know why it's happening. Because they want to sit there and cover the guy up because he's not all there in the head. And so she's going to dodge the question, which is why they won't put him in front of the press. And that gets brought up here. Hey, you know, why is Joe dodging us? He hasn't taken really many questions and he's ha doing half of what Trump did. Like, we all know your strategy. Like, what's going on here? And then I wanted to look back on your answer to Legion on the press conference. Yeah. Um, stay tuned. Sounds like Korean for no. Um, Wait, say that one more time. Stay tuned. Sound like Korean for no. So uh, you said Korean for no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. So a translation. Is there, is there is there any question? I mean, the president seemed pretty explicit, and I, I asked this in addition to the context of Friday, where he'll be posting the German Chancellor, and it doesn't appear like there's a press conference on the schedule. That's another one of these foreign leader um, visits and skipped a Super Bowl ad or a Super Bowl interview. So it, it just seems, again, like we're in one of these instances where the president is not communicating with the press. And... I mean, look, seriously, stay tuned. <laughs> that is that is that is the that is the answer for you. Uh, look, I mean, look, the president took questions yesterday to questions today. So I wouldn't say that he is not engaging with the press. I would not say that. You shouting at him is not him taking questions, Kareen. It's not. Stop it with that. Put him on the podium for a good hour and a half. Take everybody's questions. See what happens. We all know what's going to happen. Oh, 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 oh. He's going to look for dead people again. He's going to start conversing with somebody that's off stage that nobody else can see, but he can because, like I said, he's so close to death. Because um, uh, he does. Uh, and uh, when, I have, if, when we have more to share on later this week, what Thursday might look like, or, or Friday with the German Chancellor coming, certainly, as it relates to... Um, the press component, certainly we will share that. It, it really, truly is. Stay tuned. Uh, I guess the criticism, and, and you look not only on engagements, which now the president corrects his predecessor in terms of that, but 
interviews where it's you know half of most of his recent predecessors at this point in his, his term um, <coughs> interviews where it's less than half. It, it, can you kind of flesh out? I mean, there's no kind of denying this this strategy and what, what you're. So look, I, look, I'm not going to stand here. Thank you. There's no denying the strategy that you're hiding the guy that is delusional. His head's not on straight. He wears a diaper. He's doing nap time all the time. We're lucky if we get him four hours a day. And of that, the fraction of the time we actually see of him. And she's going to sit there and go, well, you know, he's, he's taking questions. Well, he's, you know, he's drooling and fighting with his teleprompter. Can't say a damn sentence coherently. But, you know, hey, he's out there. We're shuffling Joe out in the gurney four more years. Why is he on? Just, is anybody, let me know if you agree with this. I like the reporters in there sometimes. Why is he walking on eggshells with this question? Like, why is he dancing around? We all know what's going on. Look, the classified documents of which they're not going after Biden for anymore, by the way, cover up. January 6th, cover up. Pipe bomb, cover up. You guys, you have to, we'll come back to this. This is the biggest cover up, in my opinion in United States history, that you have a president in the White House that isn't running it. You have somebody that is an elected official that has a brain that ain't working, that probably has dementia or something, allegedly. That is the biggest cover-up, and they won't put him out there and actually admit it. And it's so much of a cover-up, they have the balls to actually have this guy run again. That is insane. If they're able to keep this from you, like, what else are they keeping from you? You know what I mean? Here and deny the, the numbers. I'm not, that's not what I'm going to do here. But I will say that the president, one of the things that the president has been able to do is communicate in non traditional ways. That is true. Uh, and he's done that in a way we have not seen other presidents do. That is true, right? We're that is probably the most truthful thing she's ever said. The president communicates in non traditional ways. I've never seen a president communicate with dead people, Kareem. That's pretty non traditional. I've never seen a president take pictures with somebody that was never there in the first place. That's pretty non-traditional. She's correct. <laughs> She's absolutely correct. I was, I was looking at him. He's like, how long you been back, bud? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dude's been dead for 25 plus years and, and Joe's having a conversation with him and she won't even address it. Oh, like, oh God, you saw him. Yeah, I see him all the time. With his drip tray and his helmet on and him barely making it across the stage when one piece. Yeah, I see him all the time, Kareem. I see him fall off his bicycle, eating his chocolate chip ice cream, taking hard questions from the press. Mr. President, what's your favorite ice cream? Chocolate, chocolate chip. Mr. President, what are you doing later today? Uh, nap time. Mr. President, what's your name? Exactly. <laughs> so, god damn. <laughs> We're not done yet. We got the other gladiator, Philip Wegman here, asking her a great question. And he has a follow-up here with it of like, uh, what happens if the border doesn't work out? That's kind of the ultimate question here, Kareen. And we all know it's not going to work out. So let's answer the question. And then a uh, second question. The president said last month that there was a crisis at the border. And now the White House is calling on uh, members of Congress to, I think in your words, to put policy above <laughs> politics in the absence of that, though, uh, is the president evaluating any executive actions that he could take on his own uh, to address that crisis? Is he looking at perhaps a menu of things like you know, maybe a, a state of emergency or yeah. new, new policies that he can act on his own? We have a bipartisan. Anything, Kareen, anything. By the way, this question goes deeper than maybe what meets the eye because he's allowed to. Ha he's a, there's a law in the books that says he can sit there and seize the border. He can lock up the border. And he won't do it. Great question by Phil. An agreement that the Senate put forth. Republicans and Democrats came together. There's actually a piece of legislation. Text came out on Sunday. Folks have been working on that for two months, and it is the toughest and the fairest piece of legislation that we've seen in decades. There is something out there, right there in Congress, for them to answer those questions that you just asked me. It is, it is uh, you know, it is unfortunate that politics is getting in the way. The Border Patrol Union, Phil, supported this supported this legislation. I, U.S. I, Chamber I, of Commerce. 
I, I, I it hear, supports this legislation. I hear all, all of that, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Did and you that is all been well reported. <laughs> Of, like generally the consensus is that this thing is either imploded or it's dead on arrival and, and we can wait until there's uh, an actual vote but is there anything that the president himself is evaluating that he could do um, assuming what we all expect is going to happen happens which is that this bill does not pass we want yes phil we actually saw the answer to that but she's not going to answer it on the podium he wants to give amnesty to everybody here, which was our, our segment that we saw earlier. The dude on video said he wants to give amnesty, citizenship to everybody that's here illegally. I see this agreement move forward. That's what we want. I don't have anything else to speak to. Go ahead, George. Wild. Freaking insane. You guys. 180000 dollars plus benefits goes to this lady. A hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. for that performance. And the other question I've, I honestly got, I'm really curious if there's a Democrat that somehow weaseled their way in here, fun welcome. You know, you gotta find truth somewhere and you're gonna get it from Republican conservative. Sure and hell ain't gonna get it from the Democrat party here. Um, aren't you pissed about this? You know what I mean? Like, like if you're a Democrat, like aren't you just a little bit pissed the fact that you're paying $180,000 and you're not getting any questions answered either? It's not just Republic. I mean, the whole, I mean, the majority of the room is progressive, you guys. The majority of the room is Democrat. They're, they're all they're all rubbing the, sh the feet in the shoulders of and stroking something else with Joe the Biden administration. You know what I mean? So they're not even getting their questions answered. So that, that's my question. Like, aren't you like, aren't you a little pissed that your hard earned money's going to somebody that's not even willing to answer any questions? I'll be honest, dude. If I as a registered Republican, if Trump does get in office and his press secretary pulls off this shit. You're damn right I'm going to hound them. You're damn right. Because I'm paying money to get questions answered, right? She, $180,000 of taxpayer money. Like, are, are Democrats upset? I guess not. I guess not. Why, you know, what am I, why am I trying to rationalize the same people that will vote for people like Gavin Newsom, Joe Biden, talks to dead people, Kamala Harris that can't figure her own thing out? Fucking madhouse in this White House, dude. Well, our last story of the day here, Gina Carano sues Disney after Elon Musk offers legal help. I haven't read this yet. I'm actually really intrigued by it because I like Gina Carano. I loved her when she was a gladiator. I loved her when she was in the UFC. Um, and honestly, I love her a, as an actress as well. It's sad to see her not part of Star Wars, but I totally get it. And by the way, she was, just a heads up, many of you probably don't know this, it's our first episode of this channel was because of her. When I saw her ousted from Star Wars, I finally just said, F it. We're going to do the show. I'm going to get on YouTube. I've been wanting to do it for years. It just proved to me that you could do anything you want, say anything you want, whether it's good or bad, and they'll try to silence you. First episode is because of this lady right here. Gina Carano filed lawsuit against Disney on Tuesday, three years after the entertainment giant cut ties with the star actress from its Star Wars spinoff show, The Mandalorian, after what is deemed offensive social media post. Carano announced on X Tuesday that her lawsuit filed in the U.S. federal court for the Central District of California was prompted in part by an offer from Elon Musk. The billionaire entrepreneur said in August of last year that X would fund the legal bill for anyone who was unfairly treated by your employer due to posting or liking something on this thread or platform. The lawsuit alleges that Carano was wrongfully terminated, losing millions of dollars in income and seeks to force Lucasfilm to recast her. Ooh, that's an interesting one. And seeks to force Lucasfilm to recast her, but I don't know if she wants back with Disney. Why would you want to work with them again? You know what I mean? The fans want her back. I want her back to be part of the Mandalorian. But I don't know if she wants that. You know what I mean? So that's an interesting take right there. I'm not so sure on that last one. Musk responded to Corona's post writing, please let us know if you would like to join the lawsuit against Disney. The actress was asked by Disney after she posted a screenshot of another social media post that warned of the current political climate resembling Nazi Germany. Her post read, Jews were beaten in the streets by Nazi soldiers, by their neighbors, even by children because history is edited. Most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply being Jews. How is this any different from hating someone for their political views? She's not wrong. I mean, this was back when, remember, you had Maxine Waters take up and say, go after Trump supporters, whether it's at the gas station, you know, and restaurants. And so they actually went after conservatives and Republicans in restaurants. They were beating them in the streets. 
you can even go around and, and say that you're a Republican for fear of getting your ass kicked. So she's not wrong here. And by the way, we talk about this regarding uh, socialism and specifically fascism, which is an outgrowth of socialism. Uh, in our book, Trojan Horse, How the Left Destroying America, we actually talk about how Antifa masquerades as anti-fascist when actually they're fascist. And we actually connect that to not just Mussolini's socialism, but also specifically to his fascism and how they utilize various tactics and how those tactics are resembled from the group Antifa. That was just an ideology, according to Joy Behar and some people on The View, as well as Joe Biden and others. But they're a real group, which we break down in our book. Check it out. Trojan Horse on the Left is destroying America. So I'm curious here. I don't know where this is going to go. I hope she wins money. I think she deserves it. But at the same time, I just, I'm not, I'm not sold on the idea that she wants back. That part, that part threw me for a loop. This article goes on for a very long time, but I'm curious. Do you think Gina Carano deserves millions of dollars? Do you think she should join the Mandalorian once again? Fans would love it. Disney would hate it. And maybe that's the objective is her throwing shade at Disney and working for them, trouncing around and, uh, you know, giving them the double, double middle finger. Let me know what you think about that one in the comment section below. Damn, what an episode, folks. Uh, this Biden administration is uh, trying to do anything and everything they can to give amnesty to these illegal aliens. And like I said, uh, if they get it, that's a, that's a Democrat vote for the rest of our lives, folks. Uh, let us know what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you think Karine Jean-Pierre is worth $180,000? Let us know in the comments. It does support the show, folks. We'd love to hear from you. And with that being said, I'll see you tomorrow here on The Ball Bright Show.